you have a favorite character from a book, movie, or TV show? What makes them iconic? Let's talk about character design. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe. My name is Steph. I'm a writer and artist. I've been writing stories about original characters for over three decades. Inspiration for a character can come from anywhere. You can create a fictional version of yourself, living exciting adventures you can only imagine. Maybe the character is inspired by a friend or a family member. In my novelette Rise of Killer Claw, the protagonist is an anti-hero inspired by my pet cat. Inspiration really can come from anywhere. You want your readers to understand your characters are cool, powerful, or beautiful. I get it. As a creator, I want others to see what I'm imagining. A good concept to remember is show, not tell. Russian playwright Anton Chekhov is often attributed with originating this theory with his quote, don't tell me the moon is shining, show me the glint of light on broken glass. Isn't that beautiful? It's not about using more words, it's about using words to paint a picture. This can be applied to character descriptions. The goal is to help the reader envision the person in your head. Not just how they look, but who they are. To do that, you, the creator, need to know your characters. Here are some important things to remember when creating a character. Create a backstory for your character. It doesn't have to be long, and you may not put the whole backstory into your finished project. We all come from somewhere, and our past experiences have helped to shape us into the people we are today. The same is true about fictional characters. To have realistic and engaging characters, the reader needs to believe the characters have a life outside of the story. Give your characters a personality. In Rise of Killer Claw, the protagonist Sebastian is on a journey of transformation to save his friend. To demonstrate the character's personality, I confronted him with opportunities to make decisions. Through the decisions, the reader can start to understand the character. Today's video is brought to you by Rise of Killer Claw, now available on Amazon. Think about why your character is having an emotion and describe their reaction. We connect with characters who have emotions and you can create a realistic character by letting them show how they feel. Is your character in a situation that makes them angry? Describe your character's response. How do they act when angry? For example, they may slam their fist on the table, or they may stop talking and quietly plot their revenge. Instead of just naming an emotion, show the result of the emotion. And finally, be purposeful with physical descriptions. If it is important for you that the reader knows the character's wardrobe, think about what those clothes say to the reader about the character. Is your character wearing a red shirt? then tell the reader why the character chose a red shirt. You might say, Hannah felt unstoppable when wearing her red shirt. It was a costume, like Spider-Man. When she put it on, the villains of the world were less frightening. This is also true for hair or eye color and skin tone. Show the reader why this aspect of the character is important. Whenever possible, Try to save specific physical descriptions for important moments to make them more impactful. For example, Aiden was mesmerized by the sparkle in Kim's brown eyes. Resist the urge to use comparisons when describing colors. It is difficult to make comparisons meaningful, and the color name works just as well. I like to use specific color names whenever possible. Instead of dark blue, light purple, or light brown, you could use azure, lavender, and bronze. When used sparingly, obscure words can add zest to your story. These are just my thoughts as a writer and creator. Let me know what you think in the comments. When you create a character, what's your process? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.